Ladies and gentlemen, we begin part number three with Koyomi Monogatari. And listen, I just finished episode two. I can already tell I'm gonna love this season, man. I have mad early Hakusho and early Bleach vibes, which is what really, really drive me uh, into the series in the first place when I first started watching ba Baki Monogatari, aside from its incredible visuals and its great dialogue. It was like that one, that feeling in my heart. I was like, yo, I'm loving this. And that's how I'm feeling right now watching Koyomi, especially for the fact that it's it's been episodic so far first two episodes and i think the whole season is gonna be episodic just based off of the summary i read it said it's gonna contain a lot of short stories so i'm all for that man they're only like 11 minutes long but that that's what that's all they need to be bro and it's really nice because now koyomi monogatari has like that thing that's exclusive to it i feel like every single season has had that one thing that's exclusive to it like no other seasons have which is really hard to do by the way uh in in a, in a series of, of this length but that's what i like so much about it but yeah, man, the fact that it's been episodic so far has been focusing on different uh, characters. And you can tell what character the, uh, the series is going to focus on, or the episode is going to focus on, whenever in a certain opening place. W the moment I heard the Nekomonogatsuri opening, I was like, this is going to be a Hanukkah episode. When opening one played, I was like, this is going to be a Senju God episode. I'm not going to lie. I marked out. I marked out mad hard in my chair. I, I learned her was the first opening. I saw the staplers, and I was like, Senju God. Just seeing her with the long hair again. And um, and seeing, I think it was the day right after they they um, they started their relationship. It was just so cool. I love stuff like that. And so, man, this is gonna be episodic Monogatari. I'm all for it, the son. I'm really, really am. This is gonna be mad dope. I can already tell I'm gonna enjoy this season. Just seeing certain character interactions again and how they continue to involve their relationship. Seeing it from then till now. Seeing Araragi. Um, learn more and more about apparitions and whatnot from Oshino. Just having Oshino again in there, hearing the old Bakemonogatari soundtracks. I'm, I'm just having a good time so far, bro. It really feels like a very um, a very fitting thing to watch uh, before we head down into, or uh, we're already in the final season from what I see, but just a very fitting thing to see for us to really go back. And it's it's awesome because I've been watching this right after Kizu Monogatari, which was really, really took me to the beginning. And now I'm seeing all of this and I'm just, I'm enjoying it, man. I really, really am. So, Koyomi Monogatari, enjoying it a lot so far. Look forward to seeing some more of these episodic short stories. Absolute greatness in coming, man. But if there's 12 episodes, does that mean some characters are going to get more than one episode? Or are there exactly 12 characters? Because <laughs> I'm trying to think in my head, like, who, who's next? If we're going in order, uh, then it, it probably would be Hanekawa, uh, Sinjugara, and I think next is, is um, Kanbaru, but I'm not sure. Could be Shinobu. Well, no, I don't think so, because if we're staying in that time period, him and Shinobu didn't really start talking again until Nisa Monogatari. Well, I don't even know if this series is only going to stay in the Baka area um, of the series. It could go way later on. In that case, we could get an Ogi episode. I don't know, dog. I don't know. I'll see y'all next time. Koyomi greatness, yo. Bro, it's a Mayoi arc. Or oh, I should say episode. Oh, man. I, bro, because... In my heart, it's already settled in that she's gone. So it's like, bro, I, I was waiting for the opening start. I was like, okay, this is going to be a Conru episode. Maybe an Adeko episode. Bro, when I heard the din 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 din, and I saw the bio, I was like, no, Haji Kuji. Because it takes place before everything happened. Bro, this episode is about to kill me, man. If I come out after this in tears, bro, I, I can't blame myself. This is about to kill me, bro. Oh my gosh, I just had to come on here and say that, man. Just seeing Haji Kuji again. <laughs> oh man, dude, yo, see that's the effect the series have on you, man. Like whenever you see a character uh, again, back when they were still, oh dude, let's watch this. I gotta see Hajikuji in action and just see her classic antics with Adonagi. That's gonna be fantastic. I'm super excited now. <laughs> Man, I'm really, really enjoying uh, Koyomi Monogatari a lot so far. It reminds me a lot of uh, the 400s in Gintama, of like, this feels like a whole bunch of stuff that he'd been wanting to write and just put out a sh set of short stories and said, screw it. I feel like talking about these characters, putting them in certain situations, having th certain themes attached that would uh, apply and or seem interesting with certain characters, and I like it. I like the way it's been going so far. I really enjoyed the Kanbaru and, uh, and Senju Gahara episode. Uh, that episode had me dying of laughter, man. I was, <laughs> I was dying. I'm about to watch episode 8, man. It's been fun. Uh, I love how they're going through all the openings, too. 
uh, from each specific series. Like I remember they had the, um, it, it, when it, was, it wasn't just limited to Baka, I thought we were only going to stay in the Baka era, but apparently we're going closer and closer to where we left off in second season, so I'm like super hyped, right? And, um, and so we had the, when we got to Karen B, or Karen's opening, I was like, oh snap, we're even going to the Nisa Monogatari stuff. So, and then we hit uh, Suki. I was like, oh snap, all right. So we're gonna be getting some more openings with other characters and whatnot. I'm looking forward to seeing, cause there's like four episodes left, I think. So, but I've been enjoying it, man. I've been enjoying it. I cannot wait to buy this in novel form because I asked in the Discord if the Koyomi Monogatari series has, um, if it's that the short stories are split into multiple books or is it all in one thing? And apparently it's split into two books, all these short stories. And I have I love episodic storytelling, so just to have that in book format is going to be so nice, man. So I'm looking forward to buying this season in particular. Like I said, giving me heavy early Bleach, early Hakusho vibes. A similar ma manner that like Baka did, or like the whole series does, honestly. But um, the thing I really love about this one is, is that it's short stories, back to back to back to back. And it's, uh, like I said, it's like Sirachi from Gintama in the, in the chapter 400s, uh, where Sirachi just threw a whole bunch of stuff on the wall and said, I want to write this. And that's how I feel with this. It's a lot of fun, you know, getting to see these old faces and our certain characters. And even whenever you know what arc is, or what um, character the arc's going to be based on, you don't know what time period it's going to be based on. And that's what makes it really, really unpredictable and really cool. And I really like that about this series. I mean, this series is already unpredictable enough as it is. But to having back-to-back -back short stories is um, it's, it's another layer of unpredictability that I really, really enjoy. Uh, so, yeah, man, I've, I've been enjoying it. I love how every single episode, what, what does he say? It's like, uh, and time for uh, the epilogue, or rather the punchline. And then we head right into the point and, uh, and figure out exactly what it is. That need. Oh, I, I love the, um, the Karen B punchline. Uh, that, uh, the, the, the Karen episode with the dojo, that, that episode was awesome. That episode was great. I'm just trying to remember because I was I watched those episodes earlier, but I wasn't able to record it. So I'm just recording my my thoughts right now. I'm about to watch uh, episode eight right now, and I'm super super stoked because I think I might be able to finish this tonight, man. If I continue to go ham because the episodes are so short, I might be able to finish this tonight, man. And I don't want to because I'm trying to savor it because I'm almost done with the series, but I can't help it, bro. I just want to watch more Mortal God's anyway. But anyways, I'm about to watch episode eight, dog. Oh, I was right. I was right. Look, look, look. Oh, ee, ee, dog. I was wondering. I was like, because I, I was keeping the back of my head. I was like, man, if we're going through all the characters that have had their own arcs, please. I, I want, I want Shinobu's or um, the characters that have had their own arcs, but now they're getting their own short stories. It's like, please. I want Shinobu. I want Sodachi, and I want above all that. I mean, Shinobu is my favorite character, but like, I just want to know so much more about Ogi. So I was like, please. Please let me have one short story with flipping Ogi because I love her relationship with Aradagi. So I'm like, I just, I need, I need some more of that. And lo and behold, the, well, when I heard the music, I, I look at my chair, look at my chair. I, I flew out the chair. I legitimately flew out the chair and grabbed the camera. I was like, Ogi. Okay. Let's go, I'm about to watch this. That episode was absolutely insane. N knowing what I know from Owari Monogatari and from Monogatari second season. Because the first, half of, the first half of the episode was dedicated to Ogi, you know, with her sense of balance, um, and how she attempts to keep the balance, right? And um, and then you, they're over there at the shrine, which is where a majority of, like, the insanity uh, was happening back in season two with, with, uh, with Nadeko, with Sengoku. And the fact that the second half of that episode was dedicated to her, you know, it was mad spooky whenever she was talking, man. Especially the certain camera angles they had on her, you know, I was like, good God, bro. As like Aradagi said, he had no point of knowing uh, what, what would take place. And, I, and it reminded me of all that stuff, bro. And I'm like, I want to know what happens, bro. I, I, I completely forgot that my man Kaiki got smoked over there, bro. Like, man. Speaking of Kaiki, I, we, we saw him in episode 5. I think he was with, um, it was him, Aradagi, and Shinobu, if I'm not mistaken, of, of this season. And then, uh, I, well, I was looking at my notes, I forgot to talk about a certain thing. In episode 6, uh, after finishing that episode, which is the dojo episode with Garen, I was really thinking about, because you know how they pretty much lied in order to keep uh, that thing there, uh, the, the tree. You know, saying that the wood used from that tree was used to build the dojo. And it really made me thinking uh, of, of the origins of certain myths and stories. 
because I was like, dude, I'm pretty sure many myths and stories were created out of lies, legends created out of lies that later on become truth because how many people carry that as their truth. And I just found that to be very, very fascinating in the way that that episode was handled. Uh, but regardless, episode eight was spooky. Ogi, I mean, it was an Ogi episode, so it was awesome. But specifically the, 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 the Nadeko stuff, knowing, like I said, what we know from Monogatari's second season, uh, it's just, once again, it, it it brings me back to that, and I'm like, bro, I want to know more, man. I want a continuation to that, bro. <sighs> it's, it's, it's insane. But anyways, man, let's get right back into the awesome sauce. I just, I had to, I had to get that off my chest, man. A Shinobu episode! So, you used to make it an Ogi episode and a Shinobu episode? I'm in there. I'm in there like swimwear, bro. Koyomi Boro got to the awesome sauce. Let's get it. No, duo, that means I, Ononoki's probably next. <laughs> Yo, this is gonna be a godly stretch of episodes. I absolutely loved that episode, man. And the ending with Hanagawa explaining to Adadagi exactly what Shinobu had done was fantastic, man. That was so cool. Ononoki episode. I had to pause it right here at the beginning. I think from here on out, I'm watching this to the end, bro, and I'll come back whenever I finish uh, Koyomi Monogatari. I'm just... These short stories, man, they're so awesome. And, and the fact that we're following so many different characters, and it's not exclusive just to the character. It's just like the the arcs, whenever it's like the longer versions of the arcs, not just the short stories, and the other seasons. Even though it's named after a certain character, it doesn't necessarily have to focus just on that character. And I really, really enjoy that, even in the short stories. So that's dope, man. But let's go ahead and finish uh, Komi Monogatari. We're about to get an Ononoki episode. You know, there's going to be a lot of peace, peace, and awesome sauce in it. So, and the yay! <laughs> so let's get right into it, yo. Bruh, my mouth. I had. That was seriously one of the most shocking turn of events I've ever seen. Not only that, but this series truly hit me with the Sriracha 400s of Gintama. This, is, this looks like it's about to be Shogun Assassination and Arc level stuff, yo. Bruh. Episode 11, there was something off. No opening plate. It was called Koyomi Nothing. It was Kagenui and him, right? And then he came back. And apparently he was going to find out the truth about Ononoki. If he was managed to land a hit. Came back to the same place. She was gone. And it reminded me exactly of the situation whenever Aradagi ran up there and, and met up with Kaiki and Sengoku. And I was like, oh snap, are we connecting to season two? But we're going beyond that, dog. Bruh. Episode 12. I don't think there's been an episode in the series that's made me sweat that hard thus far. I was sweating. My eyes were wide open like this throughout that entire sequence. But when God. Bruh. I knew it was called Koyomi Dead. And I was reading the text, but like it just wasn't processing. I thought I was talking about something that happened previously. So when Gaian came in, apparently with the original Oddity Killer, which they continuously brought up, and in Monogatari is type of series, whenever you bring when something gets brought up, it's for a reason. From the moment that Gaian came up in front of him and said, that darkness is you, you are the one that must be eliminated. Don't worry, this will only hurt for a moment. And a split second, Every single one of his limbs and his head was completely cut in half. He got bodied. Eradicated. 
Bro, I have chills just thinking about it, man. I had never seen anything like that before in my entire life. What in the fuck? <laughs> and then to end off the episode, to show us that this man is actually dead, is Hachikuji. Yo, what is going on, dude? This, Koyumi Monogatari, I loved it for the simple fact that it was just short stories. This Kaganui thing legitimately came out of nowhere, bro. That was crazy. Now Kaganui is busy. We got to see in that same episode. There was this one particular, this one particular sequence. Gaian was going in on the dialogue. And we got to see everyone where they are right now. We got to see, we got to see Oshino chilling on a mountain. Hanekao was chilling out there on a journey. We got to see Mr. Episode. Everyone, Kanberu, Ogi, uh, Senjugara. And I was like, bro, what are we doing? <laughs> Literally every single character. And I'm like, bro... But man, what, what, what the hell is gonna happen, bro? Yo, it's mad early in the morning, bro. I, I need sleep. I don't know what to do, bro. But at the same time, I, I might have to just let this cinder and process, dog. How am I gonna sleep, bro? Oh Bro, what is gonna happen? I mean, I understand that this series deals with a lot of supernatural stuff anyway, so, like, it's not like my dude is just gonna be out of the series, even if he truly is dead. You know, they, they see they see supernatural beings regardless, so... I don't know if Adadak is really, really dead or not, bro, but my man's actually dead? Senjo God is gonna kill guy and bro. What is going on? And then in the midst of all this, Kaiki gets smoked too. Bro, bro, literally, we are we are back. We're back in March. Bro, Awadi's. Oh my! I need answers. What time is it, man? What the fuck? It's just all these sleepless nights, bro, and it's killing me, dog. I don't know what to do, bro. I can't believe what I just watched, dog. What the heck, bro? woke up with Hachi Kuji. This author's a genius. It's almost as like if her role this entire time was to return back to 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 to, to, to the dead, you know, to actually go back, but that would not be her finale. Atadagi would have to reunite everybody he died as well. It's like everyone has a role. It's like I respect this overall. This this is gene. This is amazing. This is why I love Monogatari, bro, for stuff like this. I want to write stuff like this. The unpredictability. This is this is the rush. This is why this series and catching up to it. I can't stop because the rush of not knowing what's next. The rush of not knowing whether you're gonna run into a fan service heavy episode or a trollish episode or a ser or an episode. Uh, that has some insane um, dialogue and some fire, or if you're running into an episode like this, like you just don't know. You don't know if, if the next episode is going to be in the future. You don't know if the next episode is going to be freaking N N Nadeko going ham on the entire squad. You don't know if the next episode is going to be freaking Hitagi and Kaiki. I just don't know. That's why this series is so goat. 
And then in the midst, I thought the entirety, bro, I was fooled. I was fooled by the summary. I was fooled by this arc. I was fooled by everything. I legitimately, because I've watched so many series, and I know y'all can relate to this, because you've watched so many series, you can tell certain plot points and when they're going to happen. I, I, who predicted this? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know, I don't know if I should just cancel everything tomorrow, man. I don't know. <sighs> Bro, I'm gonna need to, I need to download it on my phone. I, I have to. I have to. I, 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 might, I might have to say screw it and just save the vlogs for after whenever I get back to the crib. I don't know. Man. I, I, I gotta, I... I'm watching at least one episode, bro. I, I gotta, I gotta do something, dog. I, I don't know, bro. I don't know. This is wild. This, this is crazy, bro. This is like one of those, 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 those moments in anime, dog. Like I'm legitimately shook. All right. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna do something, dog. I, I, I can't. I, I, I can't even stop moving. I don't know how I'm gonna sleep. I might have to sit back in the chair and watch this episode. <laughs> oh my god. Here we go again. What an incredible arc, man. I just finished up my own health stuff. <laughs> this is so gold, man. An entire arc dedicated to Hachikuchi and Aradagi again. And then Taratsaru was down there too, bro. My dog double T. And finding the truth about so many things. About the dolls. Ononoki. And it's like, man, dude. That one conversation that Hajikuji was having with Aradaki towards the end really, really hit home, bro. And the fact that Aradaki decided to take Hajikuji with him. Say, screw the separation, you're coming with me. And actually resurrected her alongside with himself. It was so dope. So now Hajikuji's back in here. But yo, when they arrived back in the real world... And awaiting Araragi was an adult shinobu with her claws and fangs right over. Let me go, I was working out. And in that moment, whenever shinobu walked over towards Araragi, patted him on the head, I was like, yo, you, you made me worry, man. Like, yo, she knew. I love that relationship so much. So shinobu's in her adult form, my God, bro. And then the one, the one who ordered Taratsaru, the enemy. To take out and eliminate Aradaki was weather flipping Ogina. Oh, I knew it. Oh, man, dude. God, bro, this is insane. This is too good, bro. What an amazing arc, man. One of these days, I'm gonna sit down. I'm gonna rewatch My Oh Hell and really digest. All the incredible themes that are being placed there, such as, or um, not just themes, but certain things that were placed late, earlier on in the series and were brought into fruition here, such as the original Shirohabi Shrine being in the park, which makes so much sense because that's where we first met Hajikuji in the beginning of the series, back in episode three, when Bake. And I'm like, bro, like, where is this author's mind, dog? How far in advance is it? And this was all according to Gain's plan. And then you even had Oshino involved too, bro, for this entire process. Man, dude. You know what sucks, man? Is that I, I, I have to get going, right? And I'm gonna have to watch it on my phone, bro. <laughs> I love it, girl. This is too good. I can't. It's addicting, dog. I'm so happy Hachikuchi's at the very least with us, man. It would be awesome. It's awesome. But it looks like from here, the counterattack begins and it's time to go in like swimwear. Let's go, man. Hagi Rendezvous, without question, is going to go down as one of my favorite arcs in this series. I loved every second of this. From Senju Gahara and Aradagi's relationship, which I've always loved, that final incredible scene between the two where they finally call each other through, but through their first names, and then the whole day just going around. There was this one particular sequence that went for like three minutes where it just showed them going out on the date together with just music playing in the background. It was so awesome. And the karaoke, the bowling, 
and uh, the finale part right there and the stuff before it was it was great man and the middle portion with Ogi bro and the conversation that they were having man and just how it took place in space because it was in a planetarium they decided to give it the visual thing that this was all taking place in the stars and I loved it visually it was awesome it was hitting me right in my right, right in my emotions what an amazing episode man truly for just a moment there i was able to forget about the overall picture i really was because i remembered the incredible character interactions and relationships in this series man but it also made me really really scared because i was like Araraki's having this date with senjo gahara they finally called each other by their first names and i'm like bro i'm worried for Araragi, man I, I really really am dog and then we hit the post credit scene and for the first time, instead of being absolutely happy to see Ogi, I was shook and I was like flipping flag was about to go down. Because like I've been half and half with Ogi, man. I mean, obviously I'm super interested, one of my favorite characters, but I've been half and half in terms of like how she is towards Araragi. And I just want to know what is gonna happen. Man, dude, that line that she said, I am the principles of the universe, bro. That was a nasty line. But at the end of the episode, good that Ogi's gonna also gonna start her counterattack against Gaian. And she asks Saradagi, will you be on my side? Please help me. And it's like, I don't know what Saradagi's gonna do, bro. I don't know what he's gonna do. This next arc is an hour, five minutes, and 50 seconds long, and it's called Ogi Dark. I'm not ready, bro. I'm not. I am 100% not ready, man. The past two sagas that we just got, Mayoi Hell and Itagi Rendezvous, were absolutely fantastic for different reasons, but I love them so much. And this one's longer than both, and it's called Ogi Flipping Dark. I really, really love that episode, though, man. The fun times and moments with Senjo Gahara and Araragi were so... They were so nice, man. Took the very best of what I love about romance anime. And put it into a situation to where I truly do care about the, this relationship. Beyond just romance. You know, but whenever you in include the romance in it, of course, it has like a special touch to it, especially when it comes to these two characters and knowing what they've gone through and whatnot. But through the comedy and the trolling and the emotion moments, it, that was a fantastic episode, man. Hitage flipping rendezvous, bro. Hitagi. Koyomi. Oh, that was beautiful, man. Like, I love that episode so much because, like, on one hand, I had that amazing stuff, and on the other hand, I had Ogi and Aradagi. In two scenes, one in the planetarium, which was fantastic, and at the end of the episode, which was... here we go, man. Ogie Dark. Ogie Dark! I'm not ready, Doc. One more thing before I start the episode. I just remembered. Ogie had this one particular uh, moment with Hadadagi that my mouth dropped. She said, I am, there's been some sort of misunderstanding. She gets right behind him on some spooky stuff and says, I am not the darkness. Which all of us expected. Or, or all of us expected her to be the darkness. I mean, it was stated back in Shinobu time. I was like, bro, what is this series doing, bro? <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's, that, now we're getting into it. You know, man... It's for an episode like this that I don't go off the uh, number rating on that that's regularly used from 1 to 10. Because to me, a 10 would be a disservice to what I just watched, bro. In the same way that I can't give the Shogun arc a 10, in the same way that I can't give my beloved Return to Sabaori 
or even the CP9 saga, or my beloved, my beloved Chimera Ant, Coalition, you know, all these things, man. Giving this season a 10 wouldn't be enough for me, which is why I came up with the Awesome Sauce rankings. This junk right here was a super awesome sauce. This junk right here was awesome sauce plus. It's crazy to me that I'm still sitting here still attempting to process because I had waited around like five minutes before I pressed the button because I wanted to make sure that I had all the tears out of both sockets because during the last like five minutes or maybe even longer that episode I couldn't stop this this eye from 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 little Goldas coming out yo and then when I saw Ogi in the end and the music hit and she was waiting for him by the classroom. This one started. And I was like, bro, I can't do this anymore, man. There's certain things that just hit you on a personal level, man. I had wondered just what in the world did Araragi go through in Hana Monogatari after we saw him that would cause him to spit that Gintoki level dialogue. And now I understand. Now I understand. It's incredible to me that within Ogi Dark, we found out that the one apparition, like, we had been wondering when, when was Aradagi's story coming, and we had thought that it was Koyomi Vamp, right? And uh, in how he became this vampire in the first place. But no, bro, because he is the main character the entire series. Excuse me. Well, honestly, I don't even know if that's factual because apparently and I still have something else. I can't believe I still have something else after this, bro. And then I might even have more after that. With the light novels and whatnot. So it's like, this to me was like a perfect conclusion. And yet there's still more, which is why I love what Shinobu Naradagi said there at the end. Like Shinobu was talking, it was such a perfect conclusion, bro. Shinobu Naradagi, how Shinobu was telling the story about, oh, dude, that scene killed me. It was Shinobu and Aradagi, man. If you, were to, if you were to die tomorrow, I'd be okay with dying too. But if you live today, I'll make sure to live along with you. And this, and Shinobu replied, if you die, I'll, I'll live on for three more days to tell the story of my master to, with pride to a listening ear. <laughs> I was like, man, And then, of course, talking about how and seeing how the next story would play out. So obviously there's something else, but it's incredible to me. You know, when Ogi was revealed to be Aradagi's, to be, to, to reveal to be Aradagi, and something that Aradagi created as something to penalize him, to give him consequences, to, to direct him down the right path, to... Uh, to act as that sort of figure um, that would, you know, nail down on his, on, on what he does because he felt so, so guilty for certain things that he did, which is extremely human, right? And it's incredible to me that even though we saw Aradagi's growth all the way from back in Kizumonogatari from the very, very beginning, he still maintained that one thing, man, with him, and that is that he could never... Uh, fully, as much as we had seen him gain confidence in himself, 
and deliver this insane, in, insanely great dialogue and helping other individuals, the one that needed the most help was himself. And in that aspect, he reminded me a lot of Gintoki, man. And that, that to me was just, you know, I had already had enough interest in Ogi, but once I found that out, man, and how the way that this series was, was, was written around that, after a certain point, this author is a genius, man. The fact that that one last apparition before he graduated was his own, the one that he created himself, to me is so goat. And how he had to end that in order to move forward in adolescence. Not only that, but it was so fitting that there in that finale were those that were along with him in the first place. And Hanekawa and Oshino, bro. When Oshino, when I saw Oshino's earring, I was, I mean, I was, I was in so much, I, my immersion was like at 130% to where I was so into what was going on with Aradagi and Ogi. And the fact that this, because bro, it was hurting me, man. When Ogi was heading off in the sunset, I was like, bro, don't do this, man. When she was getting swallowed by darkness. But then Aradagi said to hell with that, bro. I'm not going to throw away my past. I'm not going to throw away the, 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 the dark side of me. I'm going to accept it. I'm going to accept who I am, dog, because I can't just I can't just give something up once I've known it. That's what I love so much about this character, bro. Even when it comes to himself, even the bad, the quote-unquote bad parts about himself, he still comes to accept. What a goat. That was beautiful, man. And that entire scene with him on top of Ogi and that conversation you were having, bro, it was killing me. I was dying. And the, the visual, I mean, I was already in awe of the way that this arc was from, from, from a setup and from a visual standpoint. With Gain having so much backstory and, and us figuring out that that, that Shinobu story uh, with her back 400 years ago, it was pretty much like the main foundation for the rest of the series. And then from there, from oh, with Hachikuji, and now, the, now, now she's got a shrine instead of Sengoku. Oh my gosh, bro. The conversation between Sengoku and Tsukihi hit me in my gut, man. Because I had that very same conversation when I was in high school, bro, with another person, bro. Except in my case, it's from a writing standpoint, man. And so every, the words that Sengoku spoke, I felt that junk, dog. The words that were being spit, I've had that same conversation before, bro. So you know when you when you can relate to that, that it hits home ten times harder, man. And then right after that, the moment that she leaves, that's how you know. I, I see. That's why I hate tearing up, man. Because then the, the nose can't stop running. But I don't care, man. I'll, I'll I'll trade losing the nose for the greatness that I just got any day of the week. Whenever Ogi picked up um, Suki from the house and they went on that journey and everything was black and white and they had that conversation and ended it off. From then on, it was one of my favorite pieces of this medium that I've seen. You know, this series has brought me with some phenomenal episodes, some phenomenal moments, some phenomenal scenes and whatnot. Um, I always look back to episode five of second season, Subasa Tiger, to be like peak uh, that. And there's a couple other really, really top tier episodes in this series that I just have to go back and rewatch. It's that I've had the opportunity to go back and rewatch Subasa Tiger, so like I, I think heavily on that one. But Ogi, Ogi Dark Part Two, and specifically Part Three, I think took the cake for that man because as much as I was, as much as I love Subasa Tiger, uh, episode five for its for the visuals, for how it connected, uh, for, for Hanekawa's character, uh, for how the accompaniment of the, so uh, the sound direction, the visual direction, and the story. I mean, it was it was literally a perfect episode, and it was so good. And what and the stuff that Hanekawa was going through, like I said, in, in that time, like I felt that junk, I f I, and, and the, visually, it hit home. I was like, yo, this is how you tell a story, man. And I was in so much awe. But in this time, I was in awe. But instead of focusing on the incredible direction or in, in everything i was just thankful for the fact that i got to experience the story with these characters and i think that is what drives this episode for me um or the ogi dark arc uh, slightly above that man it's it's everything that i had back then amplified because of the payoff and seeing bro we got to see oshino bro giving his what appeared to be 
the fight, and it was so good because he allowed Aradagi to go out through this, throughout this entire thing, and finally, right before Aradagi is, it, it, or whenever he's coming to finally doing something for himself, that's when Oshino shows up again, bro, and I'm like, dog. And the fact that Hanakawa actually went through the struggle, and she gave the I win, going back to all the way to Ori Wan Magatari, I, I was like, bro, you know what, man? Man, dude, I loved, I, I loved, 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 loved this entire freaking season, honestly. But this arc, man, this arc, Ogi Dark, bro. I mean, so many things hit home, bro. But that confrontation in the classroom between Ogi, and it was so fitting that it was in the classroom too, bro. And I love how now, after knowing what Ogi truly is, now I understand why whenever we met Ogi, Aradagi was always forced to confront his past, to confront, you know, what made him who he is today. And certain things from his past that he tried to hide. And that's what, that's exactly why Ogi was created, bro. And man, how Ogi actually became an individual by Oshino coming up in like swimwear and recognizing that Ogi Oshino is his niece. But in the way that he said it, I was like, that was the, that was the most Oshino thing I've ever seen. And dog, like I said before, I don't know what happens after this, but if the series would have ended right there, it still would have been a masterpiece to me, man. I can't believe that there is more, bro. And it makes me so excited and so happy to know that there is more, that I get to experience more with these characters. Wow, man. You know, like I said before, that scene with Adaragi and ha and um and flipping uh, Kanbaru back in Hanamonogatari in the car hit home on so many levels, man. I love that scene. That 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 scene in of itself. I, I think back on all the time, man. Happiness isn't a race, bro. But what I got in this episode is what I truly wish that I could just teach in some sort of class for, for individuals who are going through the struggle, bro. Because we all go through the struggle, man. And that's something that this series shows you is that every single person, no matter how they are, who they are, has their own different types of struggles, man. But the one struggle that every human being on this has ever lived, a struggle against against themselves, man. And when Aradagi, instead of tossing himself aside, instead of tossing that portion of himself aside, actually actually wanted to save that part of himself because it made him who he is today. To me, I was like, you know what, man? Aradagi's a goat, bro. I mean, he truly, truly is. He's a He's, a, he's an S plus tier main character to me, man. And I felt that way for a while, but this solidified it. It most certainly did, man. This is this is peak writing right here, bro. This is this is fantastic stuff. You know, I live for this kind of stuff, man. To to to, to read and watch and experience stories of this caliber, of this level. With all the build up from the very beginning up until this point, man. And even have my favorite thing, like I, I it's, just, it's just a simple thing. But when the songs, when a, when the ending theme starts playing, or the opening starts playing at the end of an episode, especially whenever it feels like the end, at the end of a season like this, that that that's always top tier for me. That's what made the other tier come out the other eye, because it's flipping Ogi man, and actually seeing her as now truly Ogi Oshino. I already want to rewatch it, man. And I'm so glad that they have it on Crunchyroll so that whenever I feel like it, I can pop out my phone and say, let's go in there like swimwear, man. My goodness, bro. This series has provided some absolute greatness, man. So many amazing seasons, bro. So many great moments. Great scenes. I don't even... I, and I say this now, but looking back on it, I'll be like, man, but this was gold. This was gold. This was gold. I'm not even finished. But one thing is for sure, man. I'm so happy that I decided to come on here and start recording my journey, man. I don't know about... <laughs> Shut up. I thank God himself, man, for putting it in my mind to say, you know what? I feel like surprising my man 
Aradagi Senpai Kei Nasty Kaito, bro. With, with some Monogatari Greatest, it turned into this, which I never expected it to be a thing. And now it's become something that that I truly love doing. It's coming on here to talk about Monogatari. It's, I'm going to feel empty when I no longer have it, you know? like Man, dude. It's become such a thing for me in the past month. Yeah, man. Once again, man. Shout out to Nasty Kaito. Shout out to Yak and Naya for pushing that Monogatari agenda, bro. On Twitter, man, because I, I I still don't know if I would have ever gotten into the series, and like now I I'm trying to imagine my my anime and manga life without flipping Monogatari. I'm like, yo, what is it? What is it? the same way I felt whenever I watched Galactic Heroes earlier this year? I was like, dude, it's it's not the same anymore. Same with Chiaya. I'm like, yo, it's not the same anymore. It's evolved. It's become better. Like I feel, I feel like I've I've truly gained something as a human being thanks to these series, bro. And then, Awari, and then Monogatari in, in general is like Gintama in terms of like, it makes you appreciate so many things, bro. It makes you look, look at different things. And this was very, uh, this, what I love so much about this episode too, is that it was, it was a more direct approach of something I really love about Evangelion, which is why it's one of my favorite series ever. And one of my favorite scenes in anything is the freedom scene from episode 26, which is why, I'm, and I'm going to deal with this uh, on June 21st. Uh, Evangelion's coming to Netflix. And so when that happens, I already know that I'm going to have to deal with all of the people saying, oh, episode 25 and 26 are, are, are trash, trash, garbage, whatever. Those are my two favorite episodes in the series. They have been for a long time. And episode 22, 19, uh, they, you know, there's, there, there's, there's some great stuff. Um, 23, 24, you know, with Ray 3 of 24, obviously, is a good one. Uh, the, the the latter half of the series has some fantastic episodes, and you have some of the great early stuff too. But um, that that later stuff is fantastic, and then episode twenty six is why I love the series in a nutshell. And um, and that freedom scene was beautiful, and I love how the series focused towards the end on just Shinji as a character and as a person, and that's how it ended. Not on the story ending, but on Shinji as a character. And his personal journey. And it just so happened to be that in Monogatari, in this very same episode, even though it hasn't ended yet, the reason why it feels like it ends is because it feels like not only did we get the conclusion to Aradagi's, um, uh, like I said, his adolescence, but we also got the story aspect of that as well. So we got both sides of it that were beautifully intertwining in, in, in one. And the payoff and the conclusion to that here in Ogi Dark Part 3 was a masterpiece. Truly a masterpiece, man. I want to finish it today. But at the same time, I don't, bro. I want to... I, I just... Uh, I want to appreciate this greatness, man. Like, honestly, after I just finished that... I just want to soak it all in, man. I'm, yeah, I'm probably gonna gonna save the 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 last one for tomorrow, or maybe later on today. I just want to soak this in for right now, man. I'm not even gonna gonna get on social media. Screw it. I'm not even gonna make a video today. I was I wasn't gonna make a video today for uh, um uh, for something else, but I can't do it, man. I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna appreciate what I just watched, bro. I might even go back and rewatch it. <laughs> that was that was some phenomenal stuff, dog. And this is the feeling that I live for, man. Like whenever I experience something this great and this awesome, it's immersive. I, and. Ogie dark greatness. I'm spacing out. Just remember everything, bro. It's the impact that junk has on you, man. But, man, I hope all of you have an awesome sauce of a day, bro. I really do. I have all of you go out. Continue to be yourselves, man. 
continue to accept yourself for who you truly are. Because this episode had a lot of parts about that. I'm um, this arc, I should say. You know, it's okay to be um, unsure of your future. Oh, I just remembered something, bro. When Ogi was talking to Sukihi and she brought up the, the, the this this concept of the eternal present, that the future does not exist, and that we are constantly living in an eternal present, I was like, yo, dog. It's like one of those things that you know, but when you actually see somebody say it in the way that she said it, I was like, bro, because so many people worry about the future and the fact that they just had a conversation about that. It's an eternal present. You have to constantly... It, it, but the question is, can you live in the present? And I love Sukihi's answers to that. That was absolutely beautiful. But the constant of bringing up that question is like, yo, you know? Absolute greatness, man. Ogi Dark. Like I said before, super awesome sauce level plus. What an amazing season. Here's uh, Owari Monogatari too, bro. And God, what's next? <laughs> what is next? I'm half and half right now, bro. I really am. I want to watch it. I want to go out and watch the next one, but I'm like, uh, we'll see what happens, man. But I hope I'll be not have an awesome, awesome day. It was running on almost zero sleep, but you know what? It's worth it. It's worth it because it's that monogatari greatness, man. You're going to remember this series for my lack of sleep. <laughs> I really am. Remember, the same way I remember Kingdom, the sleepless nights reading the Dank series. But yeah, man, monogatari greatness. Looking forward for more. I hope all of you have a truly awesome sauce of a day. Take care of yourselves, even though this is a journey video, so you're probably going to see the next portion right here, but see, but truly, uh, have an awesome sauce of a day, man. I really, really do mean that, bro. Have an awesome sauce of a day, man. Live your life, dog. And go out and create some experiences and some memories, bro. And some memories. I finished the two and a half hour special Menzoku Owari Monogatari. Koyomi flipping reverse, bro. And when I finished the, 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 the movie, I went on YouTube, man. And I just listened to the first Baki Monogatari opening, bro. I think that started it all. And I can't believe I'm already here, bro. I can't believe it's already ended. It's felt like it's been such, such a long journey, but what a fantastic conclusion, bro. I don't know what I'm going to do now, bro. <laughs> Yo, this has been the go-to, man, for the past month. I haven't been watching anything else but One Piece. Yo, One Piece is the only... Uh, I think I've been keeping up with weekly, uh, anime-wise. I dropped everything for this series, bro. It's provided some of the most incredible and awesome memories, man. Zoku Owari Monogatari, bro. You know, I always praise uh, Be Forever Yorozuya as um, something that could be like a really good conclusion to Gintama, you know, presenting an alternate reality of the series and whatnot, right? And it's something I really, really enjoyed about that, uh, about Be Forever Yorozuya. Yeah. But whenever you have this implemented into the actual story, man, that same concept, but handled in the Monogatari way, it's just brilliant, man. And I couldn't help but think of Ononoki as Tama, but just, I had been dying to see certain, certain, um, certain of these things. For example, seeing human shinobu. <laughs> <laughs> and how her glory and greatness is so much that nobody can even look at her. They can't even stand to see <laughs> to be in her presence for too long. I mean, Adoragi was thinking about doing some stuff to himself, dog, because because of how long he was in her presence for. And I was like, man, 
but I had always wanted to see what human Shinobu would look like, man. Over 600 years ago, she was like that, man. Coming from nobility, that commanding presence. And she, I mean, she did. I remember back in, I always think back to that one scene. I think it was in Super Monogatari. Whenever she built her own uh, throne slash chair to sit on. And it's like, <laughs> she's always had that. Flipping Shinobu, man. But God, the scenes with Sodachi. I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't know that was her at first. And then just going through that and seeing what's been going on there with her, and and it's amazing because it's showing how all of them truly feel. Seeing adult Haji Kuchi and the way that she I, I would actually be if she was still alive, that was awesome as well. You know, another nod to the to the Mayo Jiangshi arc. That was really nice. And that's something I really, really enjoyed about that arc, too, was presenting, like, an alternate reality situation, which is really weird, because I just had a dream about that uh, a couple of days ago. And I've been stuck on the whole alternate reality concept. And the fact that uh, the freaking final season, or the fin final, the finale for uh, until now, I think, and, well, it, it really looked like an ending. But from from what I've been told, it's it's it, there's still, like, um, a couple of novels that haven't been adapted. I've, I've, I'm not sure about that, but... I'll, I'll ask, I'll ask, you know, y'all let me know in the comments, but I think that's the way it is. Uh, but aside from that, man, I feel the same way that I did back when I finished Owari uh, Monogatari Season 2. Yeah, that, that I do now. If Owari Monogatari Season 2 wasn't a perfect ending, then this is, man. I mean, and finishing it off with him and Senjo Gahara, and it was such a beautiful scene, bro. Whenever Haradagi just sits down, or he's, he's standing across the sidewalk, and he's holding on to... First of all, he's smooth as Flagnarts. Shout out to my boy Aradagi. Now I see where the smoothness was coming from whenever he uh, was with Kanbaru and Hanamonogatsu. Now I see where, where that smoothness... Bro, I seen Kanbaru's mother in the flash type. Hey, Con... Guy in toy, bro? Whoa! Hey, man. <laughs> Guy in flipping toys, son. But... Yeah, man, going back to that scene when uh, when Senjo Gahara and him were about to walk across the street and, you know, he's trying to think, like, which, 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 uh, you know, sometimes when I was a kid and even now, I'll sit there and I'll decide, like, which one should I go first with my right foot or my left foot? Uh, you know, I wish I had this uh, superstition or whatever that would lead me down the right path or and whatnot. And so... You know, I directed that towards so many things, so many decisions that we make in everyday life, man, of whether or not to do something or whether to do something, to go down the left side or the right side. And Senju Gahara's answer to that was so amazing to me. And it was, you jump down both. And it, that was the most, it's like Senju Gahara, I saw what Aradagi, how Aradagi has impacted her in that very same uh, scenario. Because that's, that's exactly how Aradagi is, and that's why I love him as a main character. Aradagi tries to always take both like it never tries to take one side of, of situation he tries to do, make them both right which is why he does it and then worries about the consequences later um that's the type of character that Aradagi is and the fact that Senju Gahara picked that up from him I truly show that they're ripped they're becoming one man and that was really really nice uh the fact that it ended off that way with both of them smiling like that heading off that was so nice but, you know, that really, really perfect conclusion. And they're heading right back into the beginning. Yeah, for Bach and whatnot. But, yeah, man, for the entire Komi Reverse story, the the mystery and the build-up, man, was absolutely insane. And as we continue to see... And I love how we didn't see all of the characters because it only showed the characters that we know had some sort of regret left and or something uh, left that would help transform the world that they were currently in. And so it was nice to see those certain characters that still had, you know, so, some of that still left behind. As I have the dang Bakemon got the theme stuck in my head now, bro, and it's making me emotional, dog. But, yeah, man, you know, seeing all of them in what, in, in, uh, in their other sides uh, was really, really cool. I, I thought that concept was explored perfectly in in the uh, in the Subasa Cat, Subasa Tiger stuff, but here seeing all of them going through that uh, was really, really cool, especially coming from uh, what we just witnessed at the end of Owari Monogatari Season 2 with how Aradagi had to tackle uh, his own self and had to take on his own self and accept who he is, you know, 
Uh, but first, he had to confront that. Before, he, before uh, accepting or denying whatever was going to happen, he had to confront the situation first. And so, uh, here we were dealing with Tarzan. And I love how it started, too, man. Like, this is the day right after he graduated high school. And, like, I just put myself in that, in my, I just put that, or his situation, in my, in my, in, in related to myself, right? For all those years ago, whenever I graduated high school, and I remember feeling so lost after that, man. Hell, sometimes I still do. You feel me? Like, and I'm pretty sure a lot of us feel that way, man. You know, it's, it's, it's normal to not have life figured out very early on. Some people don't have life figured out way later on. Probably say all people don't have life figured out for, for all the time of their life. That's just the adventure of life. But anyways... Um, it, whenever you leave high school, it really is a very scary, yet very exciting time because you don't know what's about to come next. But that is whenever you start thinking back and and thinking about what you left behind. You know, in high school with old friends that you might never see again, old situations and whatnot. Like that's just a whole because I remember feeling that way too. You know, trying to tie up some loose ends and whatnot as I go, but. Yeah, man, this series really does show you, and I love how specifically he tells Ogi that instead of, you know, trying to go back to their own world, how about we just move on? I thought that was very, very beautiful in the way that that was stated, because that was basically the entire theme of this of this story. You know, instead of trying to cling on to what was left behind, let's just try and move on, man. And I feel like that, that that's not only a theme when it comes to Sodachi Reverse, but I feel like that, or Sodachi, uh, Kyo Koyomi Reverse, but I feel like it's also a theme of this entire series. But moving on, man, and moving forward, which is something I really, really love about it, man. And uh, and I just enjoyed the way the mysteries can continue to pile on, and he, he continued to think about Ogi, and Ogi was trolling him the entire time, but when Ogi and him finally had that final conversation at the end of the, of, of the film... And you get in another scene with them in the classroom, but this time, uh, it's truly coming all back full circle to when they first met, man. And it, just, just like the previous one was, but in a, in a in a different way. You know, both meetings were absolutely amazing, uh, but I really, really enjoyed what Aradagi got out of it and whatnot because it's something that that that, that it's a message and a theme that 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 can hit all of us. I, I dare anybody to watch this. And not, especially after you've graduated, whatever, you've left something to go pursue something else. And, uh, and it's that feeling of, of, of both, maybe I'm, maybe I'm doing the wrong thing by leaving something behind, which is also a, a theme that was tackled in the previous arc with Ogi, talking about whether you're doing the right thing or the wrong thing, you know, whatnot. Uh, but, which is something the series tackles a lot too. You just gotta do what you wanna do, man. There is no right or wrong answer, bro. Is I just I love this series, man. I'm gonna miss it, bro. I'm gonna miss it, man. I really, really am. Especially with these last three. I mean, the entire series has been amazing, but the last like, bro. I went from what was it? The three Kizu Monogatari movies, Koyomi Monogatari, the insanity that was the ending of that, and then flipping Wada Monogatari season two. This and I'm just like, bro. This series has so many incredible things that I just, I can't wait to go back and rewatch and reread. Man, or I should say read for the first time. But man, dude, I just can't believe it's over, man. It feels like just yesterday that I started this journey, bro. And what a journey it's been, man. All the way from Bakemonogatari until now, with all the fun and extreme uh, times that that was, bro. And Bakemonogatari, just figuring out the world and the story and the characters and how certain characters interacted. To finding out even more characters and more about the world in Nisei Monogatari. Continuing on Neko Monogatari, going, taking us back to the beginning. To Monogatari's second season, which truly, is, even though I really, really love Monogatari up to that point, Monogatari's second season put it on the level above, man. It, it really, really did. Um... And then after that, you know, going, going and experiencing Hana Monogatari, which was absolutely phenomenal um, on all standpoints. There were so many scenes in Hana Monogatari that really still to this day stick out to me. The ba the one in the gym with 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 with, with Kanbaru, um, and the uh, and the sequence with Kanbaru and 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 Araragi, both in the car and at the end. Incredible stuff, man. I actually want to watch that now. Not not now that I not now that we've quote unquote finished. I actually want to go back and look at that now because I know that takes place after all this. 
because I remember specifically, well, not only does Anuragi look older and he has he has a car, but uh, Kanbaru specifically is talking about the, uh, uh, the, what's that called? The, first of all, Kanbaru talking to Ogi, which was already wearing the, the male uniform in there, and <laughs> Ogi was trolling in that one, I remember that too. Uh, but also the 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 fact that she, that, that she was seeing um, the the rainy devil in her dreams still and whatnot, which was something that they talked about as being like an after effect of what happened here in the situation. Um, and just tying all that stuff here together, man. And then Suki Monogatari with the fun and insane trolling of Horonoki, um, going all the way down to I believe it was a Wadi Monogatari after that, which. As an O guitard, I really, really love that one. <laughs> that one. That one was a lot of fun. Um, with with a Shinobu male being absolute insanity, man. And the freaking Kizu one of God today, bro. One of the one of my favorite origin stories. That that trilogy of movies is so good, man. I, I like I'm earlier today, uh, while while uh, while loading up some episodes, I was just thinking about the animation style. And the art style in those films and the way everything was done and it was handled and that battle between Aradagi and, and Guillotine or that battle between Aradagi and Mr. Episode, the battle between Aradagi and, and Kiss Shot. And I'm like, bro, those were absolutely amazing. And then the moments and scenes with Hanekawa and I'm like, he's what a good thing. Then do you think back to Morgata's second season from the Subasa Tiger and the Shinobu Time and Hitagi End? Ah. Mayuji Yangshi, then Nadeko Medusa, and then Kuma Monogatari, man. With all of the amazing episodes back to back to back to back to back, and then the insane ending that came out of nowhere that was so huge. I mean, that, that literally came out of nowhere and changed everything. And then Owari Monogatari second season, which from beginning to end, I could not stop, bro. It was so flipping amazing. Having Mayoi again, man, the entire series changing. You're seeing all the big players at once. Freaking Oshi, you know what's in it for God's sakes. That makes it a 10 out of 10 right off the bat. Then you have Ogi and Araragi finally in their conclusion, man. And what everything that was going down there, that was fantastic. Truly, man, I mean, that was absolutely phenomenal. And what I just witnessed. And Sakura on Owari Monogatari, man. With the alternate reality, bro. Freaking Monogatari Steel Ball Run. And I'm like, bro, this is so fun, man. This is so much fun. Man, dude. Like I said, I have that freaking first opening stuck in my head, and I'm just thinking back to all those memory, the amazing memories. And it's amazing to me, and this, it, this is the way I feel about a lot of series that I really love. Um like uh you know the, the the series that i always talk about like that are in my top five or even series that i just really really enjoy uh top 10 or whatever whenever i think back on why it is that i love them i'm thinking back to the little small moments man like right now i'm i'm, I'm remembering senju kahara with the trollish mask or the trollish outfit in front of uh kaiki i'm remembering back the little little moments with haji kuji with Aradagi. Um, little moments with Shinobu and Aradagi trolling with the donuts, you know. Hanakawa and Sejugahara, it's freaking hilarious, um, and whatnot, man. The amazing ending to the Hikitagi end with um, freaking Nariko finally coming into and ex and and accepting who she is, and going forward and chasing her dreams, man. Want to become a manga artist. And the small trolling within the family, the Aradagi household. It's those moments, man. Those fun, incredible moments that really make the serious stuff and the stuff like that just went down really hit that much harder because you can truly come to appreciate the characters in their best and at their weakest points, man. And I feel like that's where Monogatari hits, hits the hardest within its characters, which is... What I always say, uh, to me at least, um, the character is the most important thing. Um, if you have the characters, you can you can write any story and it'll work. As proved here by Monogatari, man. All of the characters are awesome. They're all unique in their own and creative and awesome ways. From Hanakawa greatness, 
to, like I said before, with Sodachi, a character that was introduced just recently. That my camera ran out of memory. I had to delete some stuff, but I already had most of it uploaded anyway, so at least put it on my editor. I didn't even check to look at it, man. I just I wanted to come on here and talk about it, bro. And once again, I'm really, really thankful and I'm really happy that I was able to share this journey with y'all on here, man. Because most of the time, whenever uh, I read something like this or I watch something like this, it's on my own, man. Um, I, I try my hardest to stay consistent with certain things. But earlier this year, I said I'm done with consistency because consistency is not allowing me to keep up with other things. And that was... Uh, and the series that showed me that that's Chihaya Furu. Um, Chihaya herself as a character showed me to prioritize the things that I love. And once I do that, everything else will follow. And ever since I took on that mindset earlier this year, I've been able to watch some of the most incredible pieces of animation that, that's, that's come from Japan that I've witnessed, man. From Legend of the Galactic Heroes, Chihaya Furu, Aria the Animation, and freaking Monogatari. It was such a magnificent year so far. I'm so happy that there's a lot of people I see on Twitter and on YouTube getting into the series because Monogatari deserves it, man. It's an awesome series, a fun series, and extremely well directed from both a sound, visual, and a narrative standpoint. I it, <laughs> truly an awesome sauce of the series, man. And I'm gonna miss it with every fiber of my being whatever I choose next and I always try to I never I always try to start off start the slate clean you know with with series where I don't I don't want to compare it to the series I previously just got into but after witnessing such a phenomenal series like this I do wonder what comes next man you know I do wonder what will be the next series uh, that I get into because it's gonna have to fill the hole left behind by this one in the same way this one filled the hole left behind by Chihaya and Legend of Galactic Heroes. Um, but that's just the never-ending cycle of watching great series, man. You're always trying to find another series to fill that hole left behind by the first series you ever watched. And it just continues on board like that. But all in all, man, this was a journey that I'll never forget. An experience I'll never forget. An experience that I'll always keep true and close to my heart, man. Because it's a series that... You know, just from a, on a personal standpoint, there's been certain... I, I've always been able to take certain things from certain series from an inspirational standpoint when it comes to uh, writing or from a storytelling standpoint. Um, I appreciate Togashi's ability to be able to uh, make you, as a reader, try to fill in the blanks while you're watching an episode. Uh, Hunter x Hunter is one of the only series that I've ever watched, e even more so than most mystery uh series togashi during regular episodes like in the hunter exams i would just sit or in the, ch or in the chapters i would sit there trying to figure out how the certain person was going to get out certain situations and same thing in jojo like i really do appreciate um that aspect and i would love to implement that into my writing right and uh, and then the character writing from a series like a gintama or a legend of galactic heroes or even Furu, or steel ball run um, and then the thrilling, immersive experience of a, a One Piece, of a 20th century boy's belly bat uh, flipping, um, uh, what, 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 what was that one, uh, uh, I read it last year, I think it was last year they before, Inside Mahdi, that one, and like Oyasumi Poon Poon, these, these series that are so immersive, you can't put down what you started, Onani Master Kurosawa, like a whole bunch of... Uh, these these experiences, you, I, I get everything. I get something from every series I've ever watched, and uh, Monogatari is one of those series like a Gintama and like a One Piece that I feel like I get a little bit from each one. But with Monogatari, I feel like I've been given a different perspective on so many different things, like how to write uh, from an episodic from from an episodic storytelling standpoint this is like the first time since gintama that i'm like I, I see a new perspective on how to do this and it's super cool um the way a story is told not since evangelion have i ever felt the freedom to be able to write a story the way that i want to um since evangelion and in, in the way in the way that i do um monogatari and i i was just talking about episode 26 
and how episode 26 to me represents the, the the freedom for the author to write a story in the way that he pleases and so um as, as much as backlash may come but whatever it's your story right so in this series the fact that it's told in the order that it's told and it's told in an out of order type of way is so awesome to me because it just shows me that you can take different approaches to storytelling man you know and there's been a lot of great movies and a lot of great books that have done it in the past but for a long running series like this to continue to do that is very very impressive very very impressive to be able to connect it and have it still emotionally um immersive and just able to connect to the characters even though everything's out of order is absolutely incredible to me he's trying to fill in the blanks as this goes on and it's so cool so so cool man and i've just taken in so much as inspiration bro like if I could teach a class in Monogatari, I would, man. <laughs> I would, bro. I just go back to certain episodes. Hell, I'd probably have a whole course in episode five and episode three of Owari Monogatari, uh, the the the, the, the Ogi Dark portion, that third episode. Yeah, um, just like yeah, like that's it. That's what you strive for. That's what you strive for when you go on it on this journey, bro. It's for episodes and stuff like that, man. But honestly, even. On the same levels as episodes, there's so many amazing other moments and episodes and scenes in the series. I'm gonna miss it, man. But I hope everybody has an awesome, awesome day, yo. I hope everybody continues to continue moving forward in your life, man. You know, if you've watched Monogatari, bro, I'm pretty sure that you've come to think about the same things that I've thought of, you know, thanks to this series. You know, looking back on yourself, you know, thinking about decisions you've made. Whether you made the right thing or the wrong thing, but damn it, it was the decision you made. And just coming to accept yourself and who you truly are, bro. And to move forward with what you want to do. To build special bonds, bonds and relationships with other people. Because just as Aradagi in the beginning didn't want to be with anybody, he wanted to be alone. He realized just how much fun, how much fun life can be. Even though a whole bunch of stuff happened because he became friends with all these people. He would never trade that away for the world, man. That's what I always try to, try to tell people. Don't ever trade, don't ever want, or don't ever regret and look back, or don't ever try to trade your experiences for something else in the world. And that's when I, anytime somebody says, would you erase your memories of X um, just to experience it over again, I would say no. Because something I hold really precious is my memories. And something that Monogatari really hits home on, man. But anyways, man, this series has been awesome. Like I said before, Originally, I was super into it just from a TV production standpoint because uh, I was in TV production for so many years and I truly do appreciate the effort that goes into storyboarding and the, um, the behind the scenes stuff when it comes to you know sound direction, the way the visual direction works on certain key characters, certain key moments, keeping the camera focused on here, on here, on here, certain shots used. And this series has been a mas masterful at doing that from the very first episode until now. And it just continued to get better and better, it, it feels like. Especially in those movies, man. In Kizu Monogatari, and now in, uh, in Zoku. I mean, pff, I mean, and doing the TV series, too. But you could tell just how the movie... The, the movies bring, like, a different thing to it. Because they have more time and more to develop it. But it's been such a fun series, man. It turned from me being in awe of that to me being in awe not only of that, but in also the way the characters are written. And when I'm able to be in awe of both the behind-the-scenes and of the story itself... That's just a cause for being one of my favorite series of all time, which it most certainly is. I don't know where it is in my favorites, but I can tell you for a damn fact that right now it's in the in the top five, man. <laughs> Without question, in the anime side, it, folks, they're most certainly in the top five. Uh, I loved it, man. Absolutely loved it. Maybe even top three. <laughs> just looking back to all this greatness, but I really love this journey. But you know what, man, we'll move forward, we'll continue reading the novels, and hopefully I'll be able to continue to talk to y'all now, without worrying about spoilers, about this awesome series, man. I thank all of y'all for taking time out of your day in order to watch all of these journeys, man. I know that it must have taken a <laughs> big chunk of your day, but I do appreciate you coming on here and watching me ramble about this awesome series. Uh, but this was a lot of fun, man. I never would have thought that this would have happened but in the same way and i look back to the final scene with senju gahara and Aradagi, where she jumped with both feet you know i had been thinking about how to do uh how to do this right 
um, this whole Monogatari thing. And I could have either read or watched it by myself, or I could have made the video, or or I could have just done something else, right? Or I could have not made videos at all. Uh, I, I could have watched it by myself, or I could have kept it updated through Twitter. But the decision I came to was because I wanted to surprise a certain uh, one, a really good friend of mine. I ended up going on one of the greatest journeys here on my YouTube channel that I've ever had. And I'll forever be grateful for that, man. And I did that because it was a decision that I made and I wanted to do. And had I never made the decision, I never would have gone on this journey. So I'm thankful I went, went on the decision. And whenever I do something like that, it really shows me that the ideals and themes showed in the series are factual and we should take them into our lives, man. But that's just me. I hope all of you have an awesome of a day. Thank you very much for watching, man. This has been a phenomenal series. You know, right now, bro, in my mind, I'm just trying to think of like how I order them, but I can't even order them right now because of how much I enjoyed the entirety of it. I just want to appreciate all that is Monogatari and not worry about ranking everything later, man. Even characters. I can't even rank the characters right now, bro. After Zoku, I can't even rank the characters. I just realized how much I loved all of them. You know, it's like... But y'all have an awesome sauce one, man. Thank you very much for watching. Peace out. Peace, peace. What a journey, bro. To the light novels, though, man, because this journey doesn't end here. <laughs>